On the eve of the last battle, Egwene Alvir, the Amarlin Seat, secretly calls for a meeting to have place within Teleron Riot, the world of dreams, with representatives from the Seafold Windfinders and the Aeel Wise Ones, to broker a three-way pact of cooperation between the three factions. Simultaneously, she openly proclaims a false gathering in the Worlds of Dreams version of the Hall of the Tower as a decoy to lure the Black Asia and hopefully the Forsaken Messana herself. As the real meeting comes to an end, the Black Asia rises to the bait, though in a much more straightforward way than expected. They simply assault the Hall openly with fire, killing two sisters, Shevan from the Brown Asia and Carlinia from the White. Most of the rest flee the hall while Swan rushes in to inform Egwene of the attack, and as the Amorlin reaches the hiding place of the sisters, Sairin tells her that Nynaeve is still up there fighting. Acting quickly, Egwene orders the sisters to hide away, but they find themselves unable to travel, and that's when, looking through a window, they discover a purple dome over the city. Believing the dome to be Messana's doing, Egwene sends the less experienced sisters to hide at an inn of the city, while taking with her into the battle those skilled in the world of dreams, Swan, Liani and the Aeel White Ones, Bear, Amis and Melaine. Unbeknownst to them, some time prior to this event and far away, Perrin had been training with Hopper, his wolf friend, in the art of mustering Teleron Riyadh to face Slayer, a dangerous assassin sent by the Forsaken Grendel to set a trap on Perrin. During said training, he spots the same purple dome within the world of dreams, and figures out that the inability to produce gateways that his Ashman had been having is directly related to it. He immediately links this to Slayer, so, leaving Fael in charge of his army, he enters the Lair of Riyadh to finally confront his foe. Perrin is met there by Hopper and three other wolves, Oak Dancer, Sparks and Boundless, all of them eager to aid him in the fight. Without hesitation, they transport themselves to the center of the dome where Slayer waits. Thus, the battle begins. After exchanging a few blows, Slayer kills Oak Dancer, but the rest of them manage to make him retreat for a while. So, taking the chance, Perrin grabs the Dream Spike, the Tarangriel responsible for the creation of the dome. Taking the spike, he orders the wolves to scatter in every direction while he runs away to try and destroy it. However, after a while, Perrin realizes he cannot escape Slayer, so will have no choice but to kill him. After jumping several leagues, he finds himself near Tarvalon, so he decides the city might give him an advantage in the fight. Once inside it, Perrin and Slayer finally confront each other on the rooftops of the buildings, with the purple dome, the same witnessed by Egwene, centered above them, since Perrin is carrying the Dream Spike. Perrin unleashes his inner wolf to gain an edge against his foe, but Slayer is nonetheless able to rip off Perrin's pouch containing the spike with an arrow, and taking it, he runs away. Swiftly, Perrin gives chase, followed by Hopper, who managed to find Perrin again and is determined to help him. While all of this takes place within the world of dreams, in the real world, Gawain Trakans travels hastily from Camelion to Tarvalon, for he just learned about the Bloodknife assassins left by the Shonchan after the Battle of Tarvalon, certainly intent on killing Egwene. So he rushes to the White Tower to rescue her from the assassins, and upon entering the Amarlin's rooms, followed by two of his former soldiers, Gawain finds the three Bloodknives whose superior skill, powered by a Tarangriel, helps them kill Gawain's companions, leaving him no other choice but to fight them by himself. The assassins slowly gain the upper hand, although, while dodging an attack, Gawain manages to strike one of them, killing him. But that also enrages his remaining enemies, who begin to throw all they have against him. In a last moment of clarity, Gawain throws a pillow against the only candle in the room, rendering Egwene's bedroom completely dark. Thus, all three of them are now even. By listening to his foe's movements, he guesses where they will stand and strikes a second blood knife, killing him. But the last one requires an even bigger sacrifice. 
Gawain stomps his foot to let his enemy know where he stands and remains still, only blocking his neck, hoping that he will be struck on his side. When the last blood knife effectively does so, Gawain, who was already prepared, swings his blade swiftly, decapitating the Shonjan assassin and thus securing Egwene's safety for her to keep fighting her own battle. Nonetheless, the heavy loss of blood makes him pass out immediately after. Within Teleron Riyadh, Messana commands the Black Aja attack from her headquarters, an underground room created by her on the bowels of the White Tower. First, she focuses on getting the Dream Spike that is blocking everyone from traveling, but later she shifts her target, ordering her subordinates to capture Egwene alive, thinking the Amarlin knows where the Dream Spike is. A short time later, Egwene takes Mestra by surprise, one of the Black Sisters, and kills her, but immediately after, she comes face to face with Masana and is forced to leave. Finding Nynaeve, they both go back to the hallways of the tower, fighting back to back and managing to defeat another Black Aja member. Just when they encounter Bear, one of the Wise Ones, a nearby wall is blasted away, revealing six other enemies. At the same time, Slayer, in an attempt to lose his chaser, enters the tower, but Perrin follows closely. Running down the hallway, Perrin reaches a room where he sees many Aes Sedai fighting, recognizing Egwene among them. She tries to tie him off, but he simply dismisses the ropes, and right at that moment, a black sister attacks them. She begins to weave balefire, but Perrin, once again, makes the weave vanish. Egwene then makes the wall behind her explode, instantly crushing the enemy behind the stones. After that, Perrin and Egwene split again. At the very top of the White Tower, Perrin finds Slayer holding Hopper by the neck. He throws the wolf to the side, and Perrin jumps to catch him, but Slayer follows, fighting him in the air on the way down. Perrin manages to grab Hopper before he hits the ground, but Slayer shoots an arrow that pierces both of them. Enraged and desperate, Perrin takes his last chance and, grabbing Slayer, he pushes both of them into the open pit of a nightmare that just happened to appear nearby. Concurrently, Egwene goes back to the battlefront. She manages to kill another black, Ebanilan, but immediately after, she spots one of the accepted, Nicola Trehill, who entered the Leiron Riyadh to fight against orders. Egwene is unable to help as Nicola gets caught in a fire blast, falling dead. Down the corridor, she sees Olvirin and another black sister fighting back to back, but realizing they are bait set by Messana, she sends herself to the room behind them and waits for the Forsaken to appear. When she does, Egwene makes an Aeel spear and throws it directly at her neck. But when the Forsaken falls dead, the illusion wears off, and Egwene is shocked to realize that the one she killed is Catherine O'Rodin, another of the Black Sisters, pretending to be Messana. Taking that chance to surprise her, the real Messana appears, and before Egwene can react, she clasps an Adam around her neck, taking her to her underground headquarters. However, Egwene has grown skilled in the dream world, and, comprehending that the Adam is only effective if she allows it to be, she simply refuses to accept it, making it fall open to the ground. Following that, a battle of wheels ensues between her and the Forsaken, which is evenly matched until Egwene thinks of her as the representation of the White Tower itself. Messana is strong, but still an individual, facing a whole institution that Egwene sees as unbreakable. Thus, that which breaks is Messana's mind, snapping into uselessness. From now on, her mind will be that of a child, unable to recover. When she takes her to her allies, the Wise Ones praise Egwene about how strong she has become, and everyone vanishes from Teleron Riyadh. Nevertheless, as Egwene wakes up, she freezes at seeing the bloody scene in her room. Spotting Gawain among the dead blood knives, she rushes to heal him. But, since he lost too much blood, the only thing left for Egwene to do, in order to save his life, is to bond him as a warder, thus saving him from certain death. 
At the same time, within the nightmare, Perrin finds himself in Hell's version of Tarvalon, consumed by flames, with dragon mounts erupting lava. Slayer is less practiced than him in these kinds of dreams, so, taking the chance while his enemy is struggling not to fall in a pit of lava, he makes himself look as another Two Rivers man, and fools Slayer into believing he will help him. When he grabs his hands, Perrin takes the dream spike and stabs Slayer in the stomach. While his enemy is still confused, he throws the Tarangriel into one of the rivers of lava around, effectively destroying it, hence making the purple dome disappear. Enraged, Slayer starts to kick Perrin, while simultaneously a fatally wounded Hopper speaks to him for the last time, after which Hopper's mind vanishes forever. Perrin, crying in anguish for the loss of his friend, wakes up from the wolf dream. Though Perrin succeeded in destroying the Dream Spike, Slayer is still alive, while he had to suffer the loss of two friends, Hopper and Oak Dancer. On the White Tower front, the casualties were the accepted Nicola and the sisters Shevan and Carlinia from the Brown Aja and the Whites, respectively. Additionally, Selark and Mazone, the two soldiers that fought alongside Gawain, also fell to the Blood Knives. Through these assassins, the Shaunch and two suffered three sensitive casualties during this battle, and another one shortly after, the last units remaining from the force sent by Tuon to strike at Tarvalon. On the shadow side, at least six Black Asha members were killed, and on top of that, Masana's might was rendered useless, thus effectively taking down another of the Forsaken on the preliminary stages of the last battle which is getting closer and closer, so if you like this content, please give me a like and subscribe, since more Wheel of Time battles are coming. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.